Welcome to the Business of Apparel podcast. This is the place to learn how to start and scale your own apparel brand and fill it with loyal customers for years to come. I'm your host, Rachel Erickson, owner and CEO of Unmarked Street. I can't wait to share this episode with you. Welcome back to the Business of Apparel podcast. Today, I'm really, really excited to introduce to you Bridget Sobis, who has become a dear friend of mine. Um, She and I have been a part of the same mastermind for almost a year now, and she is the amazing owner of the Power and Joy Coaching Academy. She is just kind of a mindset expert. And I have had the opportunity to work with her, not just as a friend and as kind of a support system, but I've also seen her at work and she's amazing at what she does. So thank you so much, Bridget. Thank you for being here. Oh, we're so excited to be here with you, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm honored. (laughs) Well, I, I wanted to kind of preface today's talk with, I don't know, I, I just wanted to speak just a little bit before we get into it on how you know, as a 20 year corporate America veteran, we don't talk about mindset almost at all. in in the corporate setting, I don't think there's enough chat about how mindset really drives everything that you do, whether it be in your personal life or your professional life, whether you're in an office, whether you're an entrepreneur. And only in the last couple of years of my corporate career, did I even find out that like, coaching was available and therapy was available. And And working on my mindset and how I feel about things was really important. And so I I just want to preface that with, you know, if you're working in a corporate apparel role here, um, I really want you to pay attention to how Bridget speaks about mindset and, and speaks about her profession and what she's been doing, because it is really important over the last couple of years, becoming an entrepreneur and meeting people like Bridget, I've just really understood how much it can affect everything in your life. So Bridget, I really love for you to just kind of start with like telling us about your background and how you came to start your coaching company. Yeah, I'd love to. Gosh, I mean, it's so funny because I started my career out as a hair colorist, became a master certified colorist. And if you would have told me back in 2000, no, I had to go back farther than that. 19, (laughs) I graduated high school in 91. I'm going to age myself. (laughs) <laughs> and then I went to cosmetology school in uh, 93. So if you would have told me back then that one day, Bridget, one day you are going to become a coach, I would have said, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> what, yes. What is a coach? Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I became a, I became a master certified hair colorist. I did love um, doing hair at the time. I loved making people feel beautiful on the outside. And I found myself, you know, working in a lot of different types of businesses. And I thought, I thought I was actually going to become a hair color educator. That was what I thought back in the day. And then uh, I worked for many different types of businesses. I worked for dysfunctional salons. I worked for corporate salons. I was the head of the color department at a corporate Um, salon in Chicago. And then the last salon I found myself working in was the most dysfunctional one. And (laughs) yeah. And like, yeah, it just wasn't being run very well at the time. And I, after I took over the business, I can understand why, because like I thought to myself at the time, if this person can own a business, there's no reason why I can't No, there's probably many of you feel the same way. Yes. Yeah. So I was making a six figure income as well behind the chair. And that was, that's pretty good for a hair, a hairdresser, especially back in the yeah. nine, you know, like late nineties. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard to walk away from that too. Yeah. And so I, I bought the business and I quickly realized I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I lost my paycheck. I bought a dysfunctional mess and I became the dysfunctional mess. I lost my paycheck. <laughs> I was crying all the time. I had no idea how to lead a team. I had no idea what a cash flow projection was, let alone a budget. Like my dreams of becoming a millionaire overnight and having a yacht on Lake Michigan <laughs> pretty much vanished overnight. Oh. Yeah, so I was a hot I was a, I became a hot mess. And <laughs> gratefully, somebody introduced me to a coaching and consulting company that specialized in the salon and spa industry. And I, I had no money 
at the time, but I hired them. And I'm so grateful I did because if I, if I, I think if I didn't hire them, I probably wouldn't have, the, the salon would have went under. Wow. Yeah. And by working with um, a coach and consultant, I got my six figure paycheck back. I started growing my business um, as a service provider. Because, you know, a lot of times as service providers, we get the entrepreneurial seizure. Have you read the E-Myth? The book? The no, E-Myth? I haven't. I need to, yeah. It's a great book. Yeah, E-Myth. It's a, how about how um, service providers, whether you're a mechanic or a dentist or a doctor, or a hairdresser, whatever that is, you get the entrepreneurial seizure and you're a technician and you know really, yeah. you, you know really well on how to do do that part of the business. But then when it comes to owning the business and being the CEO and running the business, it's completely different. Yeah. Well, I gratefully, I learned how to put systems in place. I got my six figure paycheck back. I started, I could run team meetings without crying. It was pretty cool. (laughs) And yeah, I was growing the business by 30, 40%. And that was actually... Yeah, each year I became an award-winning Salon Stay Top 200 in North America for 13 years in a row. I have a I have a roller coaster of a, a story, so we can get to some of those parts later. Like <laughs> I had the highs and I had the lows, mm-hmm. but ultimately because I started working with a coach, that inspired me to want to become a coach. So yeah. I started becoming a trainer back probably back in like 2009. 2009, 8, 2009, I started becoming a trainer. And then uh, that's how I kind of started my coaching journey. That's amazing. Uh, hiring my first coach back then. And I yeah. didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. And I actually think my story is fairly similar, right? Like I didn't understand that there were career coaches out there until very late in my corporate career. And when I started as an entrepreneur, it was one of the first things I went and looked for was, you know, I'm going to need some accountability. Let me go find a career coaching company that I resonate with. And I think it does. It kind of leads you into this feeling of like, you know, I I also want to teach and I have a lot of that I think I could coach on. And I think also when you're doing services, like in the day-to-day with my clients, I end up mentoring them and coaching them on a lot of things that they need to learn inside their businesses. And so it does kind of almost become a natural next step once you see the benefit of it and you see how it can be done. And especially when you see how it can be done well. Yeah. And then, you know, we're, I know we're going to be diving into mindset and I, I will tell you, I've been, so I've been an entrepreneur for over seven, 18 years now. One of the things that supported me in having a very successful business was having systems and structures in place. Like I had a, you know, job descriptions, employee handbooks, um, you know, operating systems, policies and procedures, and all those those things that 100% supported me on being able to grow my business because at the time especially when i reflect back my mindset as much as i would would work on it and i had a coach i always had this running battle with my own mind on it would be on a hamster wheel of like it's not good enough mm. they're judging me Uh, What are they thinking? They're going to leave me. I was a big people pleaser back then, if you knew me. And I, I, I hit it very, very, very well. Like I would find myself working 16 hour day, 16 hour days, 16 days in a row. It happened quite often because I had a really hard time saying no to Mm. things that came my way. And then I was on the hamster wheel of like, even though I would, I would, I was an award winning business for 13 years in a row. It'd be like, I mean, yes, I would celebrate it, but I would also be like next and next yeah. and next and next and next. So right. that was always like a real, a big thing that I struggled with before I got my first certification in NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about NLP? I, you know, I'll even admit, I would love to learn a little bit more about it through you here. Um, I know that that's what you do. And I know that that's part of your, you know, your big certification system. But if you could kind of bring it, break it down for those of us who have no idea um, what NLP is, that'd be awesome. I'm going to do my best to to simply simply (laughs) explain what it is. (laughs) So NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, it is 
it is a it is a study of excellence. It's lots of different tools and techniques, but ultimately what the tools and techniques support you in is being a master of communication. Oh. Not only with others, but with yourself. Interesting. It helps re so between the ages of 0 to 7, okay? We get quote unquote programmed our belief system into us by everyone that's around us. Um, the good, bad, and the ugly, like even people with the most amazing families, upbringing, whatever, like, so values and belief systems get installed in us primarily between zero to seven. Cause we're these like uncritical little sponges that are just taking everything in and whether we're even, we're not even aware of it most of the time. Because then right. also 95% of people's behaviors are automatically run at the unconscious level. And most people aren't even aware of it. That's why lots of times self-sabotage happens or these like automatic reactions happen. Like if you knew me eight, nine years ago and like I was upset, like I got upset with you, I would probably either do like one or two things. I'd rip your head off. Not <laughs> Really? No, yeah. I know. I'd, I'd <laughs> Figuratively, attack yeah. you verbally. <laughs> yeah, verbally rip your head off, or I would head for the hills, and mm. I would avoid everything like the plague. So those were like my automatic. So with the NLP NLP techniques, you can help reframe the way you think. You can help reprogram those like limiting beliefs and negative emotions that could hold you back. And how also it can help with behavior change, like very quickly. So wow. you become more consciously aware of what is happening around you versus like going and being on autopilot all the time. That's amazing. I was wondering if you would be open to sharing like a successful client journey, like, like an example of someone who's gone through an NLP journey or someone who, you know, has really been a good example of what this can do in your life. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. So I have a, um, and she has given me full, I have her full permission to share these stories because I have her on testimonials as well on video. Um, her name's Shelby. She's a, um, she's a business owner and she would actually say, so I coached her in two different scenarios. I coached her prior to the NLP work that I do. I was her business coach and consultant. And yes, she would have growth. Absolutely. Then actually coming up, it was almost, it's two years ago. She took my first certification program. But prior to taking my the first certification program, which she took two years ago, she would say things to me like, I suck at hiring people. Like oh. I suck at leading people. I suck at whatever it was. Okay. You guys are all free and clear of that, by the way. But <laughs> So she would say things like that. And then after she took my first certification program, she said um, she actually started hiring a team. She started hiring and attracting her ideal employees. So that was a huge shift. Then like she's taken my master's course, my master's certification. And this woman, she's very, she's also in like her mid to late, 20s (laughs) she's like oh wow own the world this girl this amazing um but like she literally says because she's in other high level um programs too because she's really committed at doing business mastery she literally says i'm a money magnet and because of the mindset work i've done with you that is where i truly had my money breakthrough wow amazing yeah that's so fantastic. That's just one, one person. I can share another one too. Yeah, you please know, do. Money. So my, yeah. another client, Mary, she's coming up on two years of taking the first certification. Um, again, she had taken other classes with me and had incremental growth. And then after she took the um, certification course, literally the next month, she worked 10 less days that month and made 50% more in revenue. She went from averaging 6,000 a month 
She's a solopreneur. She works for herself. She was averaging, um, yeah, 6,000 very next month without even working less, seeing the same amount of clients. She started making 9,000 and then wow. got another dream job of hers that she was ready to give up on. She wanted to be a, a global educator for, um, for a, a company and she was ready to give up on that position. And then like she manifested that into her life. So she's, yeah, she actually, I think she bought the website mindset is everything.com. Wow. That's a great grab. <laughs> I know. I was like, is that, that really was, a, that really was like, that was available. Yeah. yeah it's something <laughs> similar to that, but yeah, she l literally says mindset is everything. Wow. That's so great. And I think, you know, I, I am just now kind of in my entrepreneurial journey, starting to understand, especially money mindset and how like. I need to expand all of that and kind of really work on that to understand like breaking through these ceilings that we're having in, in the business. And, and I, I think it's just such important work and I've started to really notice it with other people around me now that I'm aware of it. And even though I'm not an expert at it yet, and I'm trying to, you know, get better and better, I've started to notice when like clients of mine say, well, business is really hard. We're not making any money or money's really hard to make. And mm. it's, it's really interesting how even just shifts there where like, when they say that to me now, I'll say, no, it's not. We're just, you know, we're just in this place right now, yeah. or next month is going to be better, or I am a money magnet, or I do know how to make money. And I think even just saying those different phrases out loud makes such a huge difference in how you feel about it and then what you attract. Yes. And so I'd love for you to kind of expand a little bit on maybe not just money mindset, but I'm starting to learn how important mindset is, especially as a small business owner. And I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about how important it is to focus on it. And maybe if you have recommendations for if you're just getting into this, like mm -hmm. what are some first steps that you would recommend? Yes, I would love to share on all this. So first and foremost, typically, I don't know if you experience this too, Rachel, when you're working with clients, but typically when you ask somebody, well, what do you want? My experience, and tell me if this, if this, you yeah. find this true to be for yourself, they start telling you all the things that they don't want. Yes. Or they don't know what they want. So either they don't know what they want or they're fo they focus on all the things that they don't want. Mm. They focus on the things that are not working. Okay. So here's the thing. The unconscious mind has a challenge processing a direct negative. So if I say to you, do not think about a blue tree. <laughs> do not think about a purple pig. Do not <laughs> think about your nose. Did you think about any of those three things? Oh, yeah. All three of them. Okay. Yep. So we don't realize this. So when we're focusing on the things that we don't want in our lives, we're attracting it. We constantly mm -hmm. attract it. Like you can even use it in the same situation of like dating somebody. You know, do you know someone that like they're consistently dating the person, the same type of person that they don't want. They're con continuously yes. attracting that. Me and in college. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have my, my list. But like, <laughs> but like, you know, it's like when you're focusing on what you don't want, it's like you continuously attract that. So if you're not having an awareness, so you can like, you can continue, you can change the people, you can change the scenery, you can change cities, you can change companies and you find yourself experiencing the same thing over and over again. So guess yeah. what? Like you're the, it's, you're the common denominator, right? Right. So I suggest, and this is what I focus on with my students and my clients. And this is, this is um, what I recommend, recommend for just first steps is start focusing on what you want in life. That is where you head. That's what you think about. That's what you focus on. That's the first and foremost. Um, yeah, that's great. Easy. And I think I've also been really encouraged to like genuinely like go back to the days. I, I don't know like if like you did this when you were young, but like my mom and I would would kind of do these projects where we rip things out of like magazines and we would create these vision boards and like this is the vacation that we want to go on and 
I've been encouraged to kind of go back and do that. And so it might not be magazines that I'm ripping things from, but maybe I'm pulling images from the internet. I'm like, this is my dream house. This is what it yes. looks like. This is, you know, every little bit of it. And so all of a sudden I'm thinking exactly about that dream house. I'm not thinking about what I don't want in a house. Awesome. Yeah. Cause you're, cause we hold internal representations in our mind. Our mind thinks a lot in symbols. So I love that. Yeah. So having a vision board and then visualizing it in your mind that it already has happened. Like who, oh, I always mess up saying her last name, Barbara Corcoran. Oh um, yeah. Shark mm -hmm. Tank. Yeah. That from Shark I, Tank. Is yeah. that how you say your last name? I don't know, but we're going to take it. I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I, yeah. For some reason. Yes. I have to, I'm just saying her last name. <laughs> Barbara from Shark Tank. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I've, I watched her in a documentary. Bob Proctor did a documentary on that book, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Yes, yeah. Think and Grow Rich. So he did a documentary not that long ago. And she, Barbara was on there speaking. And she talks in there about a lot about visualization mm. and already holding it in her mind that any goals that she was, that she sets or is setting, like she holds it in her mind that it already is so. It yeah. already has happened because here's yeah. the thing your what happens is, is your conscious mind is the goal setter and then your unconscious mind becomes the goal getter. Interesting. Yeah. And I've also heard too, where not just, not just believing or not like thinking like you've actually been there, but behaving like you're mm -hmm. already there, yes. right? Like behaving like, I already am a seven figure business. Like who is that woman? And, you know, we were just at an event where we heard yeah. Tracy Litt talk uh -huh. about, about, you know, what would she do? And thinking about like she being me, myself and I at 90 years old, yeah. you know, what would my 90 year old self say to me or what would she do in this instance, knowing what she knows then because she was a success and she had the dream home and she had the dream business. And so there's a behavioral change, I think there too, that comes once you've kind of not mastered the mindset, but started to recognize the mindset. Yeah. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because ultimately, like, again, what I shared earlier is like 95% of behaviors are run at the unconscious. So when we do the conscious awareness, we get to actually shift our behaviors mm -hmm. more. Yeah. I think that's so important because behaving like the type of person who, you know, already owns the company or is already making the change that you want to see or is already at the top of the corporate ladder, if that's where you're trying to go, like, what are the behaviors that that person would exude? And so how do you start to work that into your current life? And, and that kind of goes into not to go off on a total tangent, but that kind of goes into what we talk about in corporate, like if you want that promotion, or you want that raise, you know, you need to be doing that job already for us to recognize that you deserve it or that you've earned it. And so how do you start behaving at that level to prove not just to you, to the company, but also to yourself, yeah. you know, you, you belong there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think even going back to like NLP, like it's modeling excellence. So mm. in a lot of, in a, a lot of stuff, NLP has just taken things and like denominalized them. Like they broken things down into a process. Mm. Well, so when you can also look at like, who are people that you want to model after? Like who are like leaders or someone in your life you want to, because if you see that in somebody else, yeah. you have it inside you as well. So you can yeah. model their excellence and then you get to make it your unique, you know, your, your, your unique self, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And I think a cool way to recognize that and to also shift some like negative mindset. Last year I was listening to someone speak and they were talking about if you, if you are jealous of somebody, if you have those envious feelings, switch that around to recognize what you're jealous of. You want something that they have. You want something that either they're exuding or something that they own or something that they're doing in the world. Mm -hmm. And so flipping that mindset to like exactly what you were saying, like finding someone, you know, I'm jealous of this person because they own a house that looks exactly like my dream house. I just keep going back to this example, yeah, I love but it. like, 
how do I then behave like them? Yeah. How do I save money like them? How do I, you know, model myself after this person instead of holding envy and jealousy in my heart? Like, how do I flip that around and make it a positive thing? And that to me, like when you talk about um, like zero through seven, kind of learning those those behaviors, there was always this like weird thing about jealousy in my household and being such a negative thing that like leads to all of these terrible things in your life. And last year when I heard that, it was it was a game changer for me. So if you're listening, that's that's a great way to recognize who those people might be too. Yeah, I love that. That's great. And it's also, I think, a good learning lesson when someone is triggering you yeah. in a negative way, looking at, like, stepping back and saying to yourself, okay, what is the reason I'm being triggered by this? Because my guess is that people, you're being triggered by something like a wound that all there is mm -hmm. to do is it has to heal. You know, like, I would be so triggered, like, by someone getting angry or mad at me. But all, ultimately what it was just triggering was that I'm not good enough. Yeah. Like I'm not good enough or I'm not lovable or I don't matter. I train and teach and do timeline therapy. And like that for me, that was one of like the most amazing tools that I have learned to let go from, you know, like my mind, body and soul, like, those like um, negative, that negative self-talk and those negative emotions that yeah. got created. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Tell us a little bit about if someone wanted to work with you to work on their mindset now that we've exposed that it's important and it is out there. It's, it's, it's a thing. Um, if someone wanted to come work with you, get certified, work on NLP, how do they find you and how do they work with you? I'm going to probably say, I'll just make this real easy right now. So at Coach Bridget, B-R-I-G-E-T-T-E-S-O-B-U-S, -T -T -E -E on Instagram. That is a very easy way to find me and then send me a message. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn. <laughs> and all the That's perfect. Honestly, like sending me a, a DM. Um, and I, I usually get back to people within 24 hours, if not, you know, two minutes to 24 hours. <laughs> Depending on what I'm yes. doing. <laughs> yep. But um but yeah, that would be that's like a great way. And I have I even have free resources on um in my LinkedIn too. In my amazing um, uh link tree. I have um the three biggest blocks to your um your business success. I have uh 10 ways to live your highest and best self, which Oh my gosh, I just actually reposted that that free tool on Facebook today. Yeah. Two years two years ago today, I was interviewed by somebody um, that about like overwhelm and ten, I created ten ways to li to live your highest best self about two and a half years ago, and it's just ten best practices to take on to get focused, to get centered, release overwhelm, release anxiety, release stress. And what I call today, I didn't call it back then, but I, I have coined this thing uh, called delicious, being deliciously selfish. Ooh, I love that. So yeah. When you're being deliciously selfish, what that means is, is that you are filling up your cup first. Mm -hmm. You are doing your own inner work putting yourself as a priority and then your over, your cup overflows into everybody else's. Then yeah. you get to even step into that much more of leadership and that much more of an entrepreneur or a husband or a wife or parent or what friend and all the things. So yeah. that even becomes a ripple effect on the world mm. when you do you first. So yeah, become deliciously selfish, I say. Yeah. And I think that's hard for especially a lot of women to do. I mean, I'm even battling with that on a daily basis, right? Like I could spend two hours going for my walk to the ocean and put my feet in the ocean, which like totally fills my cup. Mm -hmm. Or I could spend two hours doing this present po presentation because I know it, it needs to get done too. And so reminding myself that like that time that that I that I want, not that I need is important. It's so important. I mean, and I, I mean, I speak from it from experience. Like you're talking to someone that at the height of their success 
bringing between my business and being a, an independent contractor pulling in sales for another company, probably bringing in almost $1.5 million in revenue, you know, between the companies I was leading. And I was, my anxiety was through the roof. I was so stressed out. Nothing was ever good enough, you know? So it's so important to take time and reflect and take vacations. And I don't know, just sit around doing nothing if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also find that like, it really creates um, an energy that you need to be able to then come back and do a better job putting together that presentation if you took the time to take care of yourself. And continuing to run ourselves into the ground and doing poor work because of it is just, it just doesn't make sense if you really think about it. Yeah. I mean, if I, do I have time to share one more thing? Yeah, please. It's so valuable because I was, um, everyone's free and clear of this, but I was diagnosed. I had breast, I kicked breast cancer's ass twice. You're a fucking superhero, Bridget. You are. Thank you. It's the mindset work. (laughs) It really is. I practice what I preach, but in so I had already had my trainer certifications. I already launched the Power and Joy Coaching Academy, and 2000 and t- beginning of 2022 was the was like going into my first full year of my second business, and I was like I had already left left the other company I was independently contracting for. I sold my salon, so I didn't have that anymore. So I was like a hundred percent like on my own to produce revenue. Okay. So 2022 beginning, I got a second diagnosis and I was like, are you kidding me? Like I just started this brand new company I love. And honestly, 2022 was the most emotionally healthy year I've ever had in my life. And I created over six figures and six figures in revenue in my business, working 50% less getting surgery, going through chemotherapy, going through radiation and all the healing work. So sometimes working less, you actually get to produce more. So yes, that's, that's just my little story I wanted to share. I love that. I'm still looking forward to, (laughs) to learning that personally. Um, But I have heard that from, from you and your story, which is amazing. I've heard it from a couple other people. And so I think remembering that um, in all areas of business, whether you're a corporate, whether you're an entrepreneur, um, remembering that you know sometimes doing less work or spending less time um, in the workspace is is actually much better for the quality of work that you're going to do and then the money that you're going to make from it. Yes. Amazing. Well, please go follow Bridget on Instagram. Um, she is just an inspiration and you can go back and look at all of our, we did a 30 day live together earlier this year in June. So all of those videos are still up and out there. Um, thank you so much, Bridget, for being on today. This was amazing. Such a good interview. Thank you so much for listening to the business of apparel podcast. I would so appreciate hearing your thoughts on the show. And if you know someone who could benefit from it, please share it with them. My biggest desire is to help other apparel professionals understand the nuances of our industry so we can all work toward making better product for a better world. If you would like to connect further, I'd love to invite you to send me a message through my website, unmarkstreet.com, where I do weekly trainings through my video channel, a monthly newsletter, and offer so many resources to help you start and scale a profitable apparel brand.